Hello children, welcome to social studies digital class. How are you all? Children, today we are going to discuss a very important topic, 22nd lesson from your textbook. Do you know what is that? Yes, it is Women Protection Acts. This is the first part of the lesson. Children, you must have seen in the newspapers and in the television channels that most of the women are being harassed and they are suffering with inequalities and discriminations. Children, in our country and even in the entire world, we have seen that women have been struggling harder. She has struggled hard to achieve equality, she has struggled hard to gain political and social rights for herself. There are inequalities and discriminations even in the present times also. What can be the reason for this? The reason is nothing but awareness, lack of awareness and lack of proper implementation of the laws. So, why there must be lack of proper implementation of the laws? Because women as well as the small children also fear to come out with their problems and express it before anyone. They keep everything in themselves, they hide their feelings, thoughts and they feel the guilt not coming out openly and expressing the problems. Even today though we have gained all sorts of rights, political rights and social rights in the society from past several years in our country and even in the world but still women has been suffering. So, let us understand what are these laws and how these laws can be implemented. All the people can become aware of the laws which are there for the protection of women and children and they can also protect themselves and even become an example for others. So, that everyone can have the knowledge of complete laws which are there in the constitution as well as being implemented by the governments. So, let us begin the lesson with Women Protection Acts. This is the part 1. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the child rights. Women Protection Acts. Children, in this class, we shall learn about the child rights, prohibition of child rights, disadvantages of child rights, the immoral trafficking, Prevention Act 1956. Have you ever seen or heard about child marriages? Especially in our country, child marriages occurring and in the northern part of our country such as Rajasthan, Bihar, in the rural areas the occurrence of the child marriages. Have you ever observed or heard about the harassment and violence against women and girls? So, there also will be so much of harassment for the girls as well as women and you might have or may not have heard about these harassments. Have you ever observed the various types of domestic violence threatening women in day to day life? Domestic violence in the sense harassing and even physical torture also. Children, what shall we do to stop such kind of violence cause it to girls and the women. What are the steps that are to be taken to protect the girls and the women also? The first major thing is to bring awareness among girls and women. Is there any network or mechanism for girls and women to express their worries and at the same time maintain and protect their secrecy. So, what is that mechanism? What is the network? Women and girls and even children express their worries and at the same time maintain and protect their secrecy also. Generally, girls and women fear that if it is known to public or if it is spoken openly, they will have to face the guilt. So, to avoid this, women and children keep the silence which is not correct. So, there is violation of children and women's rights still continuing in our society in various forms. 
So, these violations are there only not only at the families where they reside and even today's society there are many number of women who are going out to work. So, even at the workplace also women are suffering with a lot of harassment and humiliation and ignoring the women and even some other salt are abuse. So, these are all the various things women are facing in today's present context. So, there is a need to change the attitude of society which adversely affects the overall development of women and children and even the society should change they should treat women with full of respect and dignity. How is this possible? It is possible with proper implementation of laws made by the government and government should provide free and confident life to children and women. In this class, we will also discuss about what are the different international laws that are there and even which are also made as Indian laws and India also has signed some of the laws which are proposed by United Nations organization. So, in the year 1989, the UNO proposed International Children's Charter on which 191 countries have signed and our country is also one of them. Let us see what are those children's rights. So, the first one is all the people below the age of 18 years age are all children without gender discrimination and protection from government for the child rights. So, child rights should be protected and it should be done by the government in a strong possible way and right to leave, right to leave every person, every child has right to live independently, peacefully and happily, right to live with parents as far as possible. India, there are many children who live along with their parents only, but in other nations such as in America or in European nations, child after certain years of age may get departed from their parents, they may go to the hostels or they may reside separately. So, in this UNO charter, it has been mentioned that it is the right of the child to live along with the parents as far as possible. And the next is right to gain knowledge and get awareness about the world through media like radio, newspapers and television channels also. So, it is the right of the child to get knowledge and get education. He or she should become aware of all the things that are happening around them in this world and what are the channels through which they can gain this awareness is through the radio, through the newspapers, through the television channels etcetera and even as right to protection from violence and harmful incidents. It is the right of the children to get protected from the violence and harmful incidents and even right to get special care to live and for the development in case of the disabled children. Children who are the disabled children who lack some of the abilities, such children are called as disabled children. So, for them special care should be given by the government or any of the authorities or even by the by their families and it is the responsibility of the government to provide the special care so that they can live comfortably and happily and also develop themselves. The next is right to have good health and get medical care. So, it is also the right of the child to have a good health for himself. The next is right to use mother tongue and follow their religion and tradition. Whatever the language she speaks, they have the right to follow that particular language. The other one is right to play. So, all the children below 18 years, they have the right to play, they can involve in various games, sports and activities and they can uh, enhance themselves in different types of activities and uh, talents. The other one is right to avoid the harm for children from getting education and health. So, it is the right of the child to protect himself and the next one is right to get 
protection from harmful medicines also manufacturing and purchasing and even from manufacturing such kind of medicines and even from purchasing such kind of medicines. And the next one is right to get help when neglected and suffering. Whenever they are suffering, it is their right to express their feelings and suffering, it is their right to approach to the concerned authorities and get the necessary help. So, these are all the various child rights which are mentioned in the United Nations Organization Charter and which also is followed in our country which is also signed by the Indian government and which are also implemented in our own country also. Children, now we shall discuss about the prohibition of Child Marriage Act 2006. So, what is child marriage? If the boy is below 21 years of age and if the girl is below 18 years of age, then if they enter into the contract of marriage, it is called as child marriage. Either of them or both the parties are below that age are considered as a child and if they enter into any such contract of marriage, it is also called as child marriage. Do you know what happens if child marriage takes place? Let us discuss. A male who is about 21 years contracts a child marriage. He shall be punished for 2 years of imprisonment or and fine which may be extended to rupees 1 lakh. So, a male who is about 21 years and he enters into a contract with a child who is below 18 years. So, such a male is punishable under the law. So, what is the punishment that is given to him? That is the punishment of 2 years of imprisonment that is jail or even he also may be given the fine of 1 lakh or sometimes both imprisonment and fine of 1 lakh. And the same punishment will also be given to the person who performs, conducts or directs a child marriage under Child Marriage Act 2006. So, not even it may not be the boy who is involved in that child marriage, he is just listening to his parents or his elders. But if the same thing is directed by somebody else, th that person is also uh, punishable with the same kind of punishment that is rigorous imprisonment of 2 years and fine of 1 lakh rupees. So, seeing this and becoming aware of all these things, we must try to avoid the child marriages if they happen in our localities, in our villages or in our towns and we should gain knowledge and we should if we find out if such things are happening around us, it is our duty to stop such kind of marriages or at least inform to the concerned authorities about such marriages. If the marriage is voided after the concerned authorities came to know and they went to that particular place and they have completely avoided that marriage, then the girl should be paid maintenance up to age of her 18 years or it may be up to the time she gets married by the male who was entering into the contract of marriage and the government will take care of the children whose marriages are cancelled. The government will be taking care of complete responsibility of the children whose marriages are cancelled because of their age and the dowry and other gifts are returned after the cancellation of the marriage. Girl's father has provided to the girl during the time of marriage. After the marriage is cancelled, all the dowry has to be returned back to the father of that girl or to that girl child herself. Now, let us see children, what are the disadvantages of child marriage? So, child marriage is always harmful and let us study what are the disadvantages of child marriage and why the child marriages should be avoided. The first one is underage pregnancy. The children will face a lot of problem because of the underage pregnancy, provision for trafficking and sale of girls. So, for the sake of trafficking and for the sake of girls under the name of the marriage many of the people will get married to the underage girls and they will be sold in the name of marriage. So, this is also one such disadvantage. 
pushing the unmatured into the family system. The children who are below 18 are completely unmatured, they do not have physical and mental strength to enter into the family system, it is like a burden to them. So, it makes such unmatured girls to enter into the family system which is hugely problematic and increased abortions, premature birth which can result not only in infant mortality, but also death of mothers. So, because of the increased abortions and even if the girl gets pregnant and there will be also the problems such as uh, during the time of the birth even the death of the mothers also may take place and even handicapped childbirths or dead children also may burn to the to the girl child who is below 18 years and even there will be number of mental as well as physical health problems because they are immature they do not have much strength to speak out also and even because seeing the problems of the family because of they are overburdened with the different family uh, responsibilities. So, they may also suffer with the number of mental and physical health problems. Obstacle to education because at the time of the below 18 years is the time for the children to get educated. It is a high time when they should get knowledge, they should get aware of what is happening around them, they should uh, come up in their careers, they should get better jobs for themselves. It is the peak time for education. So, at that time if they are diverted towards the marriages there, it becomes an obstacle for them to get educated and which stops their mental growth and even their thinking skills also will be stopped if they are getting married. Hurdle for physical growth. So, at that time this is the peak stage for 15, 16 and 17 years that is the growing age for the children and during that time if they get married it becomes a problem for their physical growth and healthy life also. The children become child laborers for family maintenance. As they enter into the family system, they will be overburdened with the different responsibilities of the family and even of the children and all and seeing those conditions, they may feel that they should work and they start going to the different places because of lack of education, they will not be getting the jobs which are related to education or soft skills, they will be getting the jobs of the labor. So, there, there will be number of child laborers uh, who are below 18 years who are married and for the sake of family maintenance they enter and they become the child laborers in such a tender age. So, children these are all the various problems because of the early child marriages. So, as far as possible because you are all going to the school getting the knowledge and knowing different things implementation of the different laws in the constitution, your duty is to spread the message to all the people and you also become cautious and careful, neither such things happen to you and even you should not allow such things happen around you, which can make a healthy society. So, now let us proceed toward the next concept. Who are the responsible people to stop child marriages at different levels of administration, let us understand. So, what can be done if such things are happening? So, you need not keep quiet or just feel yourself that the wrong things are happening. So, it is even the responsibility to know to whom you should inform about such in, uh, differences or discriminations that occurring around you, to whom you should inform, let us see. At the district level, the district collector is the person to whom the information can be given about such kind of discrimination or the child marriages or any sort of harassment for the girl child or the children and revenue divisional officer is the person at the division level who can be informed about the injustices. And at mandal level, ICDS officer or tehsildar, ICDS is integrated child development scheme. So, related to this scheme an officer would be appointed and he can be informed at the mandal level about the harassment or about the child marriages or even the Hasildar also could be informed about it. And at the village level, Gram Panchayat secretary can be informed about the child marriages and these all people will take necessary steps and they will make that incident not to take place 
and they will protect the girl child and even they will encourage the parents counsel the parents for the better future of the child instead of an early marriage so now let us go for the next concept children immoral trafficking prevention act trafficking is nothing but the sale or of the human beings that will take place and even in the form of different jobs the appointment will take place and finally they will end up in selling of the human beings uh, as uh, for vetti or for the child labor or for domestic labor and for different other things so that comes under the trafficking so trafficking and selling of girls for prostitution also and for encouraging them prostitution is a punishable crime so different forms of trafficking is there the sexual assault forced prostitution social and religious prostitution sexual assault in tourism reading rustic writings and watching obscene pictures the next one is activities against the law such as child trafficking and involving them for begging so child trafficking means the child is sold and he will be adopted by some other party and he will be put them into book begging and make children physically handicapped and make them to beg on street we see many children on the streets in our country and those missing children are taken up by some of the gangs or some of the parties and make them beg on the street so this is against the law and with this body parts also the business would be done which is completely illegal and such people should be caught and punished severely and the next is children forced to sell narcotic and drugs by the elders those who have kidnapped them and they forcibly make the children to do such kind of things and those people who does all these things they are all uh, culprits they should be taken under the custody and they should be severely punished it should be a lesson for themselves as well as those who are having such kind of thoughts also should fear of doing any sort of such kind of things children the next one is laborers laborers in the sense forcing children to work without proper payments that is vetti no proper payment is done forcing the children to work and not providing even nutritious food clothes are uh, and not treating them as human beings also so such is called as vetti not these children to work without proper payment also the next one is domestic laborers the domestic laborers such as such as washing clothes cleaning the houses and utensils without proper wages interesting in neighbors houses so these all comes under the domestic works and children are sometimes employed as the domestic laborers also and nothing is paid to them and they are as if they are purchased by one party and they are sold to another party and this is done for the children and their future becomes dark because of these kind of people the next one is about the agriculture laborer involving in the agriculture work and exploited them for physical work so children are also uh, made to work in the and their work is they are exploited for, by giving them extra work more than their physical capacity they are made to work in the agricultural fields the next one is construction workers labor involved in construction of building roads etc with nominal payments and providing them with substandard foods so even children are not only in the agricultural fields but also the hazardous construction work children are involved and they are giving different kinds of works such as the construction of the buildings and the roads to assist in such kind of works and they are not paid properly nominal payments are done to them and they are also provided not with good food that is substandard food is provided to them children sometimes for sadistic pleasure children are being used for their entertainment so tying up the children on camels and making them run for entertainment and watching those children and they will get the sadistic pleasure the such people if found doing such kind of activities they should be caught immediately by the police and the authorities and punish them very severely even the adoption also should be done with the consent of that particular child so if it is not done and for the sadistic pleasure if people are using this children then it is also a punishable crime 
and sufferers what is their duty it is their duty to inform about all these things to the local police station or to the ngo non government officers for protection and care so that justice could be done and proper steps could be taken to stop such kind of crimes silence is most dangerous in certain aspects and if such things are happening before our eyes it is our duty to inform to the necessary authorities so that proper steps could be taken and such crimes should be stopped in the society so what are the steps that can be taken after the child is rescued from child trafficking the first one is it is to be such a child should be presented before the magistrate after the required medical treatment and inquiry by women police officer must be done or any other ngo and action should be taken for the protection of the victim and if the victims are children they should be sent to bala sadan the rescued person should be given full protection care and respect by the concerned government whichever the state government or the central government the rescued person should be given full protection even they should be caring to them and even respect and dignity should be given to them they should not feel the guilt of suffering such kind of harassment and if the rescued person are children they should be provided accommodation in child protection home where their education food and health must be taken care of so it's the responsibility of the government to take care of that child if they are children and give them proper accommodation and even protection and even the necessary education from which the class they are in they should be put in that particular class this good food should be given and even health also should be taken care of when this all things will happen when the child himself or herself presents the problem and to the concerned authorities and the solutions will come up automatically and what are the punishments for doing the immoral trafficking let us understand 7 years of rigorous imprisonment to life and along with that penalty for immoral trafficking and even without warrant the police can investigate the case and collect the necessary details to protect the trafficked child so children i hope you have got my point you have understood what i meant to tell you in this first part of the lesson so read the textbook carefully and try to understand it in a more better way and in the second part of this lesson we shall discuss about the dowry and even about the other concepts so second part of this lesson is also very important so kindly watch it and uh, become aware so that the implementation is also possible and the right uh, justice could be done to the women as well as children for their development and uh, empowerment so that they can grow in their life and lead a happy and successful life so with this i would like to end the session let us go for the evaluation part the first one is what is the right age of male and female for marriage what are the consequences if the child age is below that the second question is if marriages are fixed for children below 15 years what would you do to stop them the third one is what are the disadvantages of child marriages fourth one is write about punishments given for immoral trafficking try to answer all these questions write down the answers in your notebooks and show to your teachers and ask questions also to your teachers so that better knowledge could be provided to you let's meet in the next session children with more interesting concepts of women protection acts for better understanding of the concepts go through the worksheets solve the worksheets please visit the official site of sert for the worksheets thank you children